some people think the moon landing was filmed in a studio. Something nobody has ever left the earth because of something called the Van Allen belts. And some say rockets explode when they hit an invisible dome, the firmament. In today's video I'm going to take some of the real comments under my last moon landing video and walk through them calmly with real science, real engineering and a bit of humor. By the end you will not only know why Apollo 11 was real, you will also see how to spot bad arguments anywhere on the internet. Let's get into it. A few days ago I uploaded a restored version of the Apollo 11 moon landing footage. Neil Armstrong's first steps stabilized, cleaned up more detail than we're used to seeing on YouTube. Fake studio floor, space is a scam. Most of you loved it, but the comment section also turned into a kind of small scale moon landing debate club. Some comments were curious, some were skeptical and some were just wild. Nope, don't believe it, I've seen the evidence. I just know what I know. I don't think it's helpful to just shout you are stupid at people on the internet. That doesn't change minds. But I do think it's useful and honestly kind of fun to take these claims seriously enough to test them against reality. So in this video I'll pick a handful of comments uh, from my last video, explain where the misunderstandings come from and walk you through the actual physics, engineering and evidence behind them. We'll talk about the Van Allen radiation belts, the idea of a firmament dome, uh, lost technology and why I just know what I know is not a scientific argument. And if you are new here, I do astrophotography, restored space footage and science breakdowns. So if you like the space and real explanations, you might want to stick around. Please also don't forget to subscribe. I just know what I know. Let's start with this one, because it's actually the foundation of most of the other comments. I know what I know. I've seen enough. I don't care what you think. So this person basically says, I'm not going to waste my time. I've watched thousands of videos and podcasts. I don't save anything, but I just know what I know and I don't care what you think. Well, that's not so much of an argument about the moon. That's an argument about how we believe things. In science, it doesn't matter how many videos you've watched and it doesn't matter how strongly you feel about something. What matters is, can we test it? Can we measure it? Does it line up with everything else we know about physics and engineering? If someone says, I just know, or I don't care about evidence, we've basically stepped out of the scientific conversation. And that's okay. People can believe whatever they want, but then we're not talking about the moon anymore. We are talking about faith or distrust or emotions. In this video, we are going to stay with the other side. Testable claims, real data, real missions. And now let's go from I just know to something much more concrete. Radiation belts around the Earth that supposedly make space travel impossible. We couldn't and still can't go through the Van Allen belt. NASA. Okay, Van Allen belts. This one comes up constantly. The Van Allen belts are regions of space around Earth where charged particles from the Sun are trapped by Earth's magnetic field. Think of them as giant donut shaped zones filled with high energy particles. Flying through them unprotected for a long time would be a very bad idea. But here's the key. The Apollo spacecraft were not hanging out in the belts for days. They passed through them quickly on a carefully chosen trajectory and the astronauts were protected by the spacecraft's structure and shielding. So radiation is not a magic death wall, it's a dose over time. Apollo missions crossed the belt in roughly an hour or less. 
and measurements from the actual dosimeters on board show that the total radiation dose for each astronaut was well within safe limits, lower than a few CT scans. So when people say we can't go through the Van Allen belts, they usually mix up hard but manageable uh, engineering problem with impossible magical force field. Hey, quick pause. If you're enjoying the content, feel free to support the channel by becoming a Patreon member or by subscribing. Your support keeps these videos coming. So thank you and now back to the video. Enjoy. That brings us to the next big talking point. If we did it in the 60s, why can't we just do it again now? Technology doesn't just get lost. I don't believe we ever landed on the moon. This comment is fascinating, because on the surface it kind of makes sense. If we really went to the moon in 1969, why haven't we just gone back? And why does NASA say we don't have that technology anymore? This sounds like a gotcha, but it's actually just how big engineering projects work. The Saturn V rocket was a custom-built mega project. The factories that built it shut down. The tooling scrapped. The engineers and technicians retired or passed away. Imagine you built a very specific custom car in 1969 with thousands of handmade parts, every screw drawn on paper. Then 50 years later, someone says, just build the same car again, exactly as it was. You can't. The suppliers are gone. The tools are gone. The documentation is incomplete. It's not a USB stick you plug back in, it's a whole ecosystem. So when NASA says we don't have that technology anymore, they don't mean we forgot how rockets work, they mean we don't have that specific industrial infrastructure and hardware anymore. We have to build a new generation from scratch with modern requirements, safety standards. I just thought there were so many unknowns that I would have given us about a 50-50 chance of, uh, of being the first flight to, to land and return someone safely. And budgets. That's not evidence that Apollo was fake. It's evidence that huge expensive hardware projects end when the political will and money stop. And if you think about the 70s, Vietnam economic crisis, it's honestly amazing Apollo happened at all. But what if the problem isn't rockets at all, but something else stopping rockets from going up? That's where the firmament comments come in. The firmament and challenger. Okay, the firmament. This is one of the more cinematic ideas in my comment section. The firmament idea basically says there's a solid dome above Earth that nothing can pass through. Rockets, satellites, even nuclear tests supposedly slam into this dome and explode. Some comments even claim that the Challenger disaster happened because the space shuttle hit the firmament. There are a few problems with that. First, we have thousands of satellites constantly tracked by independent observatories, universities, amateur astronomers and companies all over the world. They don't just vanish at dome height. We can measure their orbits, bounce radio signals off them, watch them cross the sky. Second, if there were a solid dome at a specific altitude, we'd seen all kinds of weird effects. Rockets are flattening against an invisible ceiling. Debris patterns at exactly the same height. Atmospheric behavior that just stops. We don't see any of that. What we see is exactly what we expect from fluid dynamics and orbital mechanics. The Challenger disaster was a real tragedy caused by very human engineering and management failures specifically o-ring seals in cold weather. We have detailed investigations, engineering reports, testimony from the people involved. Replacing that with it hit an invisible dome doesn't just ignore science. It erases the real lessons that keep future astronauts safe. And that's a common theme in many of these comments. The conspiracy sounds dramatic. The reality is more complex, more human and much more useful to understand. 
but some comments don't say it's all fake. They say Apollo was real, but what we saw on the TV was a Hollywood movie. Real landing, fake broadcast. They really went, but the TV footage was a movie directed in Hollywood. This one is creative. The story goes. NASA really landed on the moon, but they didn't want people to see what's actually there. So they hired a Hollywood director, filmed a fake version and broadcast that instead. As a science fiction fan, I kind of enjoy this. But again, let's test it against reality. To pull this off, you'd need to keep the entire live broadcast pipeline secret. Replace the raw signal from the tracking stations with a movie feed. Fool not just the public, but also independent observatories, other nations and radio amateurs. As I said in my previous video, multiple countries, including the Soviet Union, tracked Apollo radio signals in real time. They would have immediately noticed if the signal on their antennas didn't match the spacecraft known trajectory and behavior. In other words, it's much easier and more consistent with, with all data to accept the straightforward explanation. They broadcast exactly what happened. Grainy, low resolution, noisy. Because the technology to send high quality video from the moon simply didn't exist yet. And that brings us to the other interesting theme. A lot of skepticism is based not on what the footage actually shows, but on what people expect it should look like. The space scam is all fake. Nobody has left Earth. Let's wait for the next astronauts. Many surprises. US narrative will be questioned. Some comments drop all the details and just go for the big statement. Space is fake. Nobody has ever left Earth. And others say, let's wait for the next moon landing then we will see the truth. I actually agree with one part of that. New missions will be incredibly interesting to watch. Artemis landings in 4K, new suits, new surface operations, it's going to be amazing. But the idea that nobody has ever left Earth runs straight into a wall of evidence. Satellite orbits, a GPS, satellite TV, space probes to every planet, high altitude amateur footage, and yes, Apollo telemetry, photos, rocks and reflectors. Experiments still being used today. To say space is fake, you have to assume that every space agency in the world, every space company that uses satellites, every university that tracks spacecraft and hundreds of thousands of engineers and scientists are all part of one perfect, perfectly coordinated, perfectly silent conspiracy for over 60 years, across countries that don't even like each other. At some point, the conspiracy becomes harder to believe than the simple explanation. Space is real, the moon is real, the Apollo missions were real. Quick pause. If you are still watching at this point, first of all, thank you. If you enjoy this kind of science-based breakdowns, restored footage and astrophotography and much more, Feel free to support the channel by subscribing or even becoming a Patreon member. It generally helps me take the time to research, restore and create videos like this. Alright, let's wrap this up. So what do we do with all of this? I think questions are good, skepticism is good. Asking how do we know is one of the most powerful things a human mind can do. But there's a difference between skepticism and refusing to look at evidence. The moon landing isn't just a cool story from the 1960s, it's one of the best documented, cross-checked, independently verified engineering projects in history. We have footage, telemetry, rocket samples, retro reflectors still sitting on the surface and entire carriers built on analyzing this data. So if you're curious or even still skeptical, that's fine. My invitation is don't stop at comments, don't stop at I just know, go to the source. 
Look at the mission reports, talk to engineers, read how navigation fuel margins and radiation does were actually calculated. And if you'd like me to keep doing this, breaking down science and space myths with real data, let me know which moon landing claims you want me to tackle next. If you haven't seen the original restored Apollo 11 footage that started this whole comment storm, you can watch it right here. And in the next video, I'll dive into another big question. Why can't we just go back to the moon? And what are the real engineering challenges behind Artemis? So thank you for watching. See you next time. Clear skies.